Okay, this uh, particular mod module is part of the Managing Change module, part of the Managing Change piece. And Managing Change involves uh, corporate plan, mergers, which is just done, you know. Is it, good, is it a good idea for firms to merge with other firms? Is that a good strategy to have? So we've done mergers, and then we've done culture, and we've done leadership, and we've done Managing Change. Now, we're now doing this part of the course, which uh, is sort of, it's, it's actually quite hard to get practical examples of this because no one no one really knows how decisions are actually made in every single organization but so what i'm trying to do here is is to bring to your attention how decisions in theory can be made and then i'll give you some practical examples of that okay so i think the big thing to remember is these two you can either have a hunch or your decision making can be scientific and if it's scientific what you're going to go out and do you're going to do lots of primary and secondary research uh, you're going to build a prototype, then you're going to test market that product, and then if that test marketing works, then you're probably going to go ahead with that project. Now, of course, if you use scientific decision making, uh, it reduces the risk of strategic failure because you're not going to have so many expensive processes that you need to go through. Uh, the, the decisions that fail after test, the marketing will then be halted, and it should result, obviously, clearly in the better decisions. Right. However, in reality, businesses may use both, or they may decide just to use a hunch. So, a hunch is when you just have a feeling about something, so therefore you go for it and, and, and you try and explore that particular idea. Now, maybe when IKEA started, this guy had an idea that he wanted to produce quality furniture that the masses could use. So, therefore, he says, well, why wouldn't people want that? Why, well, why wouldn't people want better quality furniture in their homes at affordable prices. Anyway, clearly a hunch is much cheaper, but probably more importantly, it's much quicker, so you're gonna get it out onto the market much more quickly, and the scientific method does not always guarantee success. And a really good example of that that we've just done is Nokia, okay? Nokia has, has eventually been, was taken over by uh, Microsoft. Stephen Ellert came along, and he says it's gonna be very, very difficult to change the culture of his organization because it's a huge organization. Right, but if you, when you read the story behind that, there were so many conflicting interests going on that they didn't move the, that they didn't move the whole, whole, whole firm forward and they lost out, well I think it was in terms of 3G, they were the first ones that got the tablet going and the touch screens, but their operating system was a force. So they had all the right ideas, but they never really thought that, that, that Apple could produce an iPhone and an iPad so cheaply. So, so therefore they stopped going down that route. But they did, in fact, use a lot of scientific method and they got that information and they came out with the wrong conclusion. So already I've got one example of firms that make the wrong decision, even though they've done a lot of scientific process. However, if you look at Apple, obviously I can't really know this, but I want you to say this within the exam. Steve Jobs just had a feeling. I mean, he was a genius, but he just had a feeling that the Apple iPhone and the small technology operating systems would work. Now, he dropped out of university, wasn't it? And he said that one of the most interesting lectures that he ever went to was when they did calligraphy and, and the beauty of it and how people responded to the, to the beauty of, of that written word. So into his head, because he'd gone to that lecture, and also, actually, quite interestingly, because when he walked to the university every day and, and travelled through there, he used to go through, the, or I thought it to get an evening meal from a... From, from somewhere or somewhere. But you, see, you just walked through the town and it was the smells of the town and the things that he saw and the lectures that he went to, even though he dropped out of, out of university, the, the lectures that he should have got to, that he found interesting, that stimulated him to come up with this feeling that that beauty was, was sort of very important, even in technology. And really that, that's what he has uh, obviously got out and created on that. Okay, so sometimes his hunches can also work. Now in reality, therefore, let's go back to this point, a firm may use both, so maybe both scientific and a hunch, okay? So, so far we've got two examples, Nokia and Apple. Uh, and when you make decisions, what are the factors that influence, influence those uh, decisions? Well, we're doing this previous one, they're called political, economic, social and technological decisions, okay? These are the external events that will affect firms. Now, for example, a firm 
may have corporate objectives, clearly that's going to influence the firm, so it may decide to move into a new market, it may decide to increase profitability, therefore it may decide to reduce costs. So that is clearly going to influence the decision-making process. These days, remember, doing corporate social responsibility, it may be affected by ethical factors, how many resources have you got, and the relative power of different stakeholder groups when you go out and you do all these sorts of things. So, you your hunch, scientific, and these are all the different things. These things here will influence, right? Will influence the way in which things are done. Okay, thank you.